Today's video is on diverticulitis. What is diverticulitis? What are the symptoms of diverticulitis? And how do we diagnose diverticulitis as well as a little bit about the treatment? Hi, I'm Dr. Brian. So what is diverticulitis? The origin of the word comes from diverticula, which means blind pouch, and itis, which is inflammation. It's inflammation of these little blind pouches in the colon. Diverticulitis happens in your colon or your large intestine, which is at the very end of the GI or gastrointestinal system. The stomach empties into a long tube called the small intestine, which is about 22 feet long. And then the small intestine goes into a shorter, fatter tube called the colon. It's about five feet long. The colon's main job is actually to absorb water and a few nutrients and electrolytes, but really to turn the liquid material that comes out of the small bowel into stool. And to do this, the colon has to do a lot of contraction or squeezing to move the stool from one end to the end where you get rid of it. And this squeezing forms a lot of pressure in the walls of the colon. And over time, the colon will develop what are known as diverticula. These are small little pouches that go through the wall of the colon. And these go through weak spots in the colon, in particular where there are blood vessels that are going through the colon wall at the same place. Many people have these pouches or diverticula and have no symptoms. The condition with these diverticulum is known as diverticulosis. And if you follow individuals with diverticulosis or these little pouches over a long term, like seven years, approximately 4% of people will progress to something known as colonic diverticulitis. And Diverticulitis happens when these pouches develop a small tear known as a microperforation. And this microperforation spills some of the trillions of bacteria that are found in your colon outside of your colon. This causes an infection, inflammation, and can cause symptoms. There's some thought that it's maybe food that plugs these diverticula, or they may get holes from the way the colon contracts around them, increasing the pressure. Imagine a balloon with a tiny pinhole in the end of it, and where the air slowly leaks out. That's what happens with these diverticula. What are the symptoms of diverticulitis? Well, diverticulitis is a disorder that can cause belly pain, fever, problems with bowel movements, but the most common symptom of diverticulitis is pain. And this usually affects the lower part of the belly and off to the left. Your colon is divided into the ascending or right colon, the transverse, the descending or left colon, and then an S-shaped portion of the colon that's usually over on the left, and this is known as the sigmoid. Left lower quadrant pain that is down low off to the left is usually diverticulitis because that's where your sigmoid colon is located and that's where most of the diverticula form. However, as in all of medicine, it's not a 100%. Patients can have right lower quadrant pain or even low midline pain because sometimes the sigmoid doesn't always live just on the left and especially when you get older, the sigmoid can be what's called redundant where it can get really long and be middle or even in the right side of the abdomen or much less commonly, you can even have right-sided or sequel diverticulitis. That's diverticulitis that affects the right colon. This is much more common in Asian populations and younger populations, and pain from either right, left, or midline diverticulitis is usually constant. Now, other symptoms include fever, and this is from that local inflammation, or it can be from even abscess or pus collections. You can get nausea and vomiting, and acute diverticulitis is often associated with a change in bowel habits. This is very nonspecific, though. You can get constipation 50% of the time. You can get diarrhea 30 or 40% of the time. And occasionally you can even get blood in your stool. What's a really interesting symptom of diverticulitis is in about one out of 10 patients, you can actually have bladder symptoms. It seems like a bladder infection. You can get what's known as bladder urgency, where you feel like you have to pee really bad. You can have urinary frequency, where you have to pee over and over and over again. Or you can have what's known as dysuria. That's where it burns to pee. All of those those things make you think you have a bladder infection. This can happen in diverticulitis because the colon often runs right on top of or right next to the bladder and the inflamed colon and diverticulum irritates the bladder. In rare cases, this inflammation can be so bad that you can form a hole that burrows from the colon into the bladder, which is called a fistula where there's an abnormal connection. In this case, you can actually get air from the colon and poop from the colon, which travels into the bladder, which you 
can see when you pee. Now, if you think you have diverticulitis or your physician thinks so, is there a test? Well, there's not a simple blood test and you can't pee in a cup or look under the microscope and find it. And physical exam is really not very good for diverticulitis. Maybe two out of 10 times you can palpate a mass where there's an abscess or there's some inflammation, but the real gold standard is CAT scan. This is a special imaging exam that's done in radiology. Oftentimes they'll give you some intravenous contrast or x-ray dye. They'll have you swallow some material. And when they image through your abdomen and pelvis, these highlight your organs. And this scan is really good for looking at your bowel and in particular diverticulitis. In fact, CT scan is 99% effective in excluding diverticulitis, which means if you have a CAT scan, good quality, and you don't have any diverticulitis on that scan, you probably don't have diverticulitis. And CT scan is really good for finding other sources of belly pain, gallstones, kidney stones, and even appendicitis. And one of the hallmarks of CAT scans is telling the difference between simple and complicated diverticulitis. Simple diverticulitis means that that inflammation is very localized. And then you can oftentimes just get antibiotics, be treated at home, and check up with your physician later on. Complicated diverticulitis is a whole different beast. That means you often have to stay in the hospital. You oftentimes have additional procedures, maybe to drain the infection. You might even have to have surgery to remove the disease portion of the bowel, that area that is really severely affected by diverticulitis. No matter what, very frequently, if you have a bout of diverticulitis, you'll get what's known as a colonoscopy, where they put a scope from below and look at your colon, because occasionally colon cancer can present and look just like diverticulitis. So you have to make sure there's not a hidden colon cancer. People often ask, should I change my diet if I've had diverticulitis? If you have had a bout of diverticulitis, it's actually a good idea to up your fiber after your symptoms have gotten better. And good sources of fiber includes fruits and oats and beans and peas, green leafy vegetables. But a common medical myth is you don't need to avoid seeds or nuts or popcorn or other similar foods. We used to think those plugged the diverticulum and gave you diverticulitis. That just doesn't seem to be true. So that's diverticulitis. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in more bowel videos, try this one on colon cancer, weird signs, and I'll see you next time.